I remember graduating college and I remember I had my CCNA. I wanted that network engineer title so bad. So I ended up 10 years later making it to network and leaving before I got a chance to be an engineer, a network engineer, that title that I wanted so bad. If I had to start over, I have a good idea of how I would do it now. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell. Peace. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT field, whether you're looking for that career change or you're just curious, you've come to the right place. So today, I'm giving you my network engineer's roadmap. This is how I would do it if I had to start over. But let's be honest, everyone has their own path, so feel free to use this as a guide if this provides any kind of value to you. This is going from the perspective of a beginner in IT, so someone that doesn't have much knowledge on the IT field thus far. With that being said, the first thing I would do is enroll into a community college for either a one-year certificate or a two-year associate's degree in network security, network management, cybersecurity, something around the networking realm as a field to get a degree in. But hold up. I know you said, Mike. You said that I don't need a degree in order to get into the IT field. So that's true, but that only works for certain individuals. So that type of individual, you have to be really focused and consistent to achieve that. Most of us, let's be honest, need some sort of structure. That's where enrolling into the school is going to give you. It's going to give you that structure of your learning from your from beginner all the way through. While I'm in school, I'll be taking advantage of all resources that's offered by the school. You know, most of your IT classes, they will have you doing some sort, have some sort of lab environment for you, whether it's online or it's using physical equipment, the actual equipment. So I would take advantage of that and at the same time, honing in and building my skill set. And any search that I learn about that pertains to my career choice that I'm going for, that I'm studying for. I'll make it a goal to try to obtain that cert by the time I graduate because while I'm in school, I may be working a part-time job or I may not be working a job at all. So this is where I'm going to have time to really buckle down and study to get those certifications. So then once I graduate, it's going to be time to start applying for jobs. So the first off, I'm going to create me a resume with my updated skills and my technical achievements. And if I can afford it, I may reach out to a resume writer and work with them to create my resume. Second, after I get my resume done, whether it's via a resume writer or if I've written my own resume, or you could use your resume and also use a resume that you work with a resume writer and see which one gets the best, the most hits for you. That's the first thing I would do after I graduate. Second is... In this day and time, you can't go without it. I will create me a LinkedIn page. And a matter of fact, I probably would have made this page a little bit before I graduated and started adding friends and networking on this LinkedIn page and start pretty much transferring my resume from paper to online on my LinkedIn profile because LinkedIn is pretty much your online resume. LinkedIn is pretty much your first representation to anyone. Pretty much if you apply for a job, some HR departments now, first thing they do is look up your name in LinkedIn just to see what type of person you are. So I would create this LinkedIn page. Then I would um, start networking with people because the good thing with LinkedIn is they have a feature called Open to Work. You can enable this feature on your profile and it highlights your profile with this green circle that states that you're open for new opportunities. So with this, hiring managers, uh, most of the time, a lot of recruiters, they'll be the ones try to reach out to you if they think you fit a role that they have available. While I, I will have this option activated, the open to work feature. Also, a good thing about LinkedIn is if somebody posts a job, sometimes it might show who posted that job. It shows the hiring manager. 
So with LinkedIn, like I said, it's a great platform. I love it. That's the second thing I would do. So I would get my resume done, either a resume writer or written one myself, have one I did myself. And then, like I said, create that LinkedIn page, start networking, start adding friends. Uh, you'll start to see where there's a lot of you have a lot in common with a lot of people because it's more than you out there studying for a certification or getting a networking degree, trying to get in the networking field. So you'll be able to help each other there. And everyone on LinkedIn, they're good about sharing opportunities. If you're open to work, a lot of people share your profile just so that more eyes can see that you're open to work. So overall, great platform. I can't say anything else about it. If you're finding value in this episode, please leave me a review. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or your favorite podcast app, now that I have my resume completed, and I've already got my LinkedIn profile completed and I've started networking. I'm going to start applying for those entry-level jobs such as help desk, desktop support, network admin, network analyst, network technician. So while applying, let's say if I happen to land a networking technician job, then that's great. I'm already I'm in the network department my first go around. And all I got to do now is work hard, get my experience up. Then usually in two years, two to three years, you usually should start moving up the ladder. Hopefully, I'll go from that network technician to a network analyst, then to a network engineer. Then also around that time, I'm going to be still trying to better myself by getting that CCNA certification if I don't already have it, or go after that CCMP certification, which is the professional level cert, if I already have that CCNA. But let's just say I don't land that entry-level networking role. Let's say I land a role as a help desk analyst. Good thing is, with this, I got my foot in the door. And while in this position is, I'm going to learn how enterprise environment works. And at some point in time, maybe not the first couple days, maybe probably a little bit more after I get used to the environment and comfortable in my job, I'm going to reach out to the networking manager and let them know that I'm interested in coming to the networking department. Also, I'm going to ask him any tips, you know, anything he think I should do to give me a better chance. And also, I'm going to ask one vital question. I'm going to ask him if I can come up to that department one day and shadow with one of his employees. By shadowing, I mean go up to the department with one of the employees and kind of follow them around for the whole day, or maybe for a couple of days if that's possible, because what this is going to do is it's going to give you insight on what a networking department or a network engineer, network tech, on what they do day to day. So I'm going to see what they do on a day to day basis. And from that, I'm going to be able to see, I'm going to be able to make the observation and be able to make the distinction and make the choice of if this is a job that I think I'm going to like. That's the main thing. I'm able to look at it pretty much on trying it before I buy it. So I'm able to look at that role, see what happens on the day to day. Then I can kind of determine, oh, this might be something I like. After that, let's say if an opening position doesn't never come. If an open network position doesn't never come, I would still reach out to that manager, let them know that I'm interested. But let's say I'm at help desk analyst. Let's say another position comes that's a higher level up than what I am, maybe like a desktop technician. I'll go ahead and try to apply for that role because that's still along my path to becoming a network engineer. Yeah, I just maybe I had to pivot and take another position. But with that other position, what that's going to do is it's going to show me how a little bit more of that enterprise environment. Because at Help Desk, you're not going to see everything. You're going to see the, the wide view. Then at Desktop, I'm going to see what they do on a day-to-day basis. So with Desktop, you know, I'm going to get more, learn the environment a little bit better because Desktop, usually, you're moving around. You're going to different locations. So I'm going to see how different things work. Then also, you're going to see another side of the other departments because in Desktop, a lot of times you have to work with the other departments. I may have to work with the networking department. I may have to work with the server department on different issues. This would be a good thing for me moving up from a help desk analyst 
to a desktop. So during this time in desktop, I'm still going to be working towards any certifications, any network certifications, if I don't already have them, such as a CCNA. I'm still going to be working towards those certifications because I know sooner or later that networking role is going to become available. But let's say, worst case scenario, a position doesn't never come open in networking. And I've done been there for a couple years. Then, sad to say, it's time for me to start looking outside of my company. If I already got a couple years experience in an enterprise environment, and then let's say I've already obtained that CCNA, it's just that I haven't had a chance because a position at my job, current job, hasn't opened up for the networking department, then I'm going to start looking because now I'm in a better position than I was in the beginning. Now I have two to four years, a couple years of enterprise environment experience. That goes a long way, knowing just how enterprise works. So someone sees that experience, then they may say, oh, he already knows how enterprise works. He's done been in an enterprise environment. And also he has a CCNA. So I would be more comfortable giving him this networking position now because of their enterprise environment experience. So you, I would maybe be able to land a networking admin, maybe a network engineer because I got a couple years experience now. So I would start looking outside of my job and trying to still get in that networking department. But now I'm coming. I got more weapons with me. I got years of experience and I may have a certification. So I think that's going to increase my chances of landing that networking role. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I hope you took some kind of value out of it. Like I said, this is just a possible scenario of your road to become a network engineer. Everybody's path is different. Mine went from help desk, desktop, then networking. Well, I also started with operations too, so that was before everything. So my path was different. I know some people who came in as network admins, network technicians. They came in the door. Their first job is that. And I know some people who ended up leaving different jobs in order to make their way up to a network technician or a network admin or a network engineer. So everybody's path is different. This is just one of the possible ones. If you like this episode, like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me some kind of feedback, any comments, any questions. Please leave it in the comment section. And other than that, I'll 